just threatening peep. I, you know, I was going to start with a, a good morning, Star Citizen. <laughs> he was just waving me off. Hi, everybody. We're back. Welcome to Star Citizen Live. Uh, 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 I'm your host, um, Jared. We just talked just about Jared. that. We just talked about that. <laughs> Uh, and if you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, it's where we take about an hour out of the end of our week and we chat with a few of the developers who make Star Citizen and Squadron 42 possible. On uh, this week's show, we are, uh, we are changing things up a bit. Generally speaking, uh, towards the release of any given patch, we have what we call this all about alpha, whatever it is, uh, show. And we usually bring our Star Citizen uh, live game director, Todd Pappy, on the show. And he answers your questions about all the things you've seen in ISC throughout the season building up to this. Uh, the things that you're on, P that you're experiencing through Evocati and through PTU. And it's all a big, fun thing where you guys get to ask questions and we pose right to the people, put them on the high seat, high, uh, hot seat. We're not doing any of that today. We are changing the formula. Uh, we are at the beginning of this journey to Alpha 323, Alpha 323, Alpha 323. Uh, we've all come back uh, from our holidays. We've uh, done the uh, typical uh, regroup and, and, and engineering planning for the next patch. We we'll also do our, our yearly uh, performance reviews. How'd you do? I don't know yet. Okay. We'll uh, find out. Uh, I, don't, I haven't found out mine either. But, uh, let's hope they're not watching this show. Uh, do the performance reviews. And then we begin this journey towards our next big patch. Uh, because this patch is built very differently than previous patches before, uh, it's going to showcase a whole lot of what you saw you know, uh, showcased at CitizenCon. Uh, we thought we'd uh, do it differently. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be Babe Ruth. We're going to step up the plate and we're going to call our shot this quarter. And we're going to talk about what's coming in Alpha 323 uh, at the beginning of, of this road. And to do that, joining me today uh, first is uh, uh, a friend of the show, somebody we haven't had on, the, on, on either of our shows in quite some time. Uh, you've got a new title since the last time we had it, so I'm going to have you do it because I didn't think to ask you what your title was before we started. Uh, Johnny Jasivius. Johnny, how you doing, man? Hello. Um, do you want to guess what my title is? It's... Assist, associate, assistant Design Director? Got it in one. Did I get it? Yeah, you did. Congratulations yeah. on the promotion, man. Thank you very much. Sorry, I need a bit of a water there. So, uh, 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 Assistant Design Director, what does Assistant Design Director do? Um, a lot of stuff. Um, essentially, I am cross-project on both Squadron 42 and Star Citizen itself, so I essentially run the design teams that we've got, which includes mission design, economy design, system design, technical design. So all of those teams report to me and we all work together as one big team. Uh, we also work with a lot of the other teams, obviously people like Ian Leyland and his art team, a lot of people that we've had on here before. Um, but essentially I'm working with everyone in the company more or less to try and, you know, hit the vision that we're trying to hit. You were, uh, folks who've been watching our Star Citizen programming for years now, remember you were part of the F FPS Systems design team, but you went over to Squadron uh, with that big migration, uh, gosh, two, two and a half, three two, years yeah. ago? Two, three, now, yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, you, you, you went away to Squadron, hunkered down, worked on, the, worked on all these features in, uh, in, uh, in a, uh, quiet solitude, and now we're bringing all these things back, adding to the already existing uh, a team and work of the Star Citizen development team uh, to make Alpha 323 and beyond. Yep. So we're going to jump right into it. So we are gonna, we're going to we're going to we're going to talk about the things that are targeted for Alpha 323. Now I'm, I want to before we go into the rest of the show, I want to be I want to I want to I want to talk about what that word targeted means. These are the things that the various programming and engineering teams, the art teams, the design teams, these are the features that they're all working towards and expected to have delivered for Alpha 323. We all know because we've been doing this for a while that sometimes the thing uh, slips, it gets to a go, no go, it doesn't quite make the go, uh, so like that. So this is not a exhaustive list of everything that will come. There are also um, some surprises. There are also some things that we've designated uh, surprises, things we want you to, to discover on your own when you log into PTU for that first time. So we're not going to cover everything that we're intending to put into 323, but we're going to cover a pretty uh, exhaustive list. And we're going to start with the stuff that we talked about 
yesterday in Inside Star Citizen. Uh, we came back on Inside Star Citizen yesterday. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, new EVA. So new EVA is, is, is coming along pretty well. Uh, when we first started capturing for, IS, for ISC, we, were, we still had to be in squadron builds for mm -hmm. a little bit because it was just getting integrated into the, into the Precision Universe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the time we went live, it had been it had begun its integration in the Star Citizen universe. Uh, how's EVA doing? Um, really good. Obviously, there's still work to do. Um, obviously, a big proponent of that, as you mentioned, it was in Squadron Stream. Obviously, now we're dealing with things like networking, and this is going to be true for a lot of the features that we <laughs> talk about today, is that obviously there are, the, you know, unique challenges that come with putting things into the persistent universe in Star Citizen. So, um, yeah, it's looking really good. And obviously, the, the guys yesterday, if you missed the ISC, they did a very, very good job of explaining the systems. But I'll, I'll kind of give a quick summary of that. Um, basically, you know, how we felt previously about uh, the, the old EVA system is that it wasn't really up to scratch. Uh, the player experience and just the feel of the movement wasn't really as responsive and as, as basically uh, easy to use as we essentially want. So um, as the game's evolving, we're finding that we're going into these environments where we're making tighter turns, we're going through wreckages, we're trying to do things like that. And if you think about the old EVA system, because you're flying around so upright, you kind of have a silhouette of movement that's kind of like my forearm here. But if you think about it now, because we're going into what we've kind of um, called the Iron Man pose internally, where you're kind of leaning forward, your arms are down by your side, your silhouette is more like this. So you're facing directly forwards. And what that means is, obviously, if you're going through tight spaces, it's a lot easier. When you're rotating, you're no longer uh, rotating like this. You're kind of more rotating like this. So you can fit the, through those gaps easier. And you're not bumping into things quite as often. Um, and then on top of that, if you're winding your way through, you're almost mirroring a bit like a snake-like motion. And obviously, you can kind of fit through all those tight that gaps and turns and things like that, too. Um, a lot of the comments uh, that we saw on uh, in YouTube and on uh, Spectrum and on Reddit uh, had to do with it, it seemed like it seemed like the next logical step might be like little little rockets on, on the boots little, little rocket boots to help propel you you know little jet packs you know maybe even an animation to do the christopher reeve <laughs> you know, superman thing are, are any of these being considered um in the future we want to put uh, more emphasis on basically picking equipment that allows you to EVA better. So that might be in the form of, say, EVA jetpacks, uh, not jetpacks, but EVA backpacks and things like that that might come with more EVA fuel, because that's something we want to do down the line. Um, more oxygen and things like that for existing in spaces where there's no atmosphere for you to be able to breathe. Um, and essentially, you know, looking into that preparation phase that we've talked about before, where you're making considerations that, hey, I want to be like a EVA salvager. I'm going to equip myself with the things that are going to be able to get me there. But until we get other features in, like we showed yesterday, we showed the zero-G push-pull. That's not coming in 323. No. And some of these systems we're holding back because we wouldn't really want to implement EVA fuel without having systems like zero-G push-pull because otherwise you might be sat in the middle of space yeah. run out of fuel. You've, yeah. uh, you know, you've got no options. You also need that. to build places to refuel. <laughs> 100%. Yes. Like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm glad you brought that up. We, uh, we tried to be very deliberate in our storytelling. We, we said, you know, this is coming in Alpha 323. Mm -hmm. And then further down the line, there's the, there's the traversal, the, there's the zero-g traversal where, where you're climbing on the hands. There's the fuel. We changed the work in progress graphic to say, you know, this stuff is the 323. This stuff is not the 323. Yeah. We changed the music. Uh, some folks you know, who maybe get their news from other rewatchers or whatever missed that's the, that EVA is 323, yep. but the zero G traversal that, that crawling along the hands and the fuel yeah. stuff is not 323. That is down the line, down the line yeah. because of those reasons you just mentioned, we got to build yep. these other systems out yep. to, because to accommodate them in a multiplayer environment. Yes. You, you can kind of, you can kind of gloss, you, you have other solutions in a single player game, you know, mm -hmm. mission ends and stuff like this, but yeah. So, and then, of course, networking. Networking is going to be the challenge for all of these. Yep, there, there isn't just a make multiplayer <laughs> button yeah. and 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 transfer and transfer these features over. But uh, the guys are working pretty. The guys are working pretty well. Like I said, at the, <clears throat> I want to shout out the gameplay uh, uh, folks for a, a star uh, for Inside Star Citizen. Um, they do amazing stuff. You know, there's the alpha game that you play, and then there's the PT. You know, that's got a certain level of bugginess. We're not, um, there's no reason to lie about it. Uh, there's the PTU that has a certain level of bugginess. Then there's Evo Cotti that has so much bugginess, we NDA it. And then there's where these guys work. So, 
So uh, the, the effort that they put into do, getting those EVA shots when they were still f working on networking and stuff yep. uh, was a truly uh, her her Herculean effort. And I want to shout out Will, Dave, uh, and Alex for their work on that right there. Uh, we also, let's move on to uh, 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 the personal interaction experience or player interaction system. Uh, I, I'm not going to use the acronym. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> and the default item actions. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah. Where did this come from? Because obviously, with we were working towards inner thought and all this other stuff. I know we talked a little bit yeah. about it at CitizenCon, but but where in the development of Squadron 42 did that change? Did did we realize we needed this other approach? Yeah. So obviously, we we had an interaction system that has evolved a couple of times, right? And it evolves through necessity and where the game's at and where we feel like it needs to go. So. We used to just have the super, super plain interaction system. You remember the old use thing that was mm -hmm. in the middle of the screen? Use. And, and it used to just be, you know, looking back on that now, it was quite inappropriate because you would hit use and hope that it was the correct action that, you know, it did. Is it going to pick it up? Is it going to open it? Is it going to close it? What's, what's going to happen? So that obviously wasn't very clear. And as the game evolved and the items and the way you interact with the items got more... Um, kind of in depth and you know you could do three or four or five or six different things with the same item the necessity came to basically have a selection there so that's basically where we ended up with the system that is currently in star citizen at the moment where we've got the list now obviously playing with that for such a long time we eventually got to a point where we were saying you know we could definitely do better here and it's something that we've wanted to do for quite a while so that's where the player interaction experience comes in, where we are now condensing this down into one single use action. But unlike the old use action, you get a verb that essentially tells you what it is you're going to do. And that also ties into default item actions. So I could look at all of these items on your desk, right? All of them might be very different from each other. Your laptop might be like the old school use action, which would tell me that I'm probably going to hop down and start typing on the laptop. That folder there might be more like a pickup action or an inspect action if it's something that's like a data pad if there's an iPad on the table or something like that and that allows us to basically look at all of these different item types that we've got in data and say this is what we think the default item action for this thing should be but again in ISC something really cool that we showed off is the ability to customize that as well so we're not getting rid of all of the big list of actions that we previously had that were quite difficult to navigate through especially in like situations like combat combat is obviously <laughs> something that we we've seen a lot of in in squadron hold on i'm in the middle of a fight let me go through this long list of things here while i'm getting shot yeah, yeah you can envision how that generally goes and again through the game evolving comes the necessity to change it right so uh I just want to look at a weapon on the floor and hit go. I just want to pick it up and use it, right? Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, the, the we're not getting rid of all of the other actions that you can do with the items. It's just that they are tucked away behind a wheel. For the people who want to customize this experience or use the other interactions on specific items, it's all there. And it's in a slightly cleaner format with the wheel, so you're not accidentally clicking something on a condensed list that we used to have. Some of the comments we saw, again, on, uh, on, on YouTube and Spectrum and whatnot was, that as you looked around, F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F F on everything. Is that going to happen every single time a player looks around at everything? Is that a is that a toggleable thing? So we've spent a lot of time tuning that. So it's picking out the important items, the large items. Basically, we we've got a system that essentially finds out where your focus is. So again, we have played with this a lot. If this if the F moving around on all these different items got annoying, it would annoy us too because we've played the game so much as well. So we're at a point now where we feel like the F selection is very, very clear and easy to use. And it, the selection itself isn't, we, we know like, like if I was here right now and I had moved my focus to your laptop, but I was too far away to look at, to actually use the laptop, it would prioritize the closest thing that is still in the focus. It's actually a very smart system. Um, so yeah, we don't get annoyed by it at all. And for the people who actually like to use it, the interaction system is still there. So you can still mouse over things and highlight them and interact with them if you really need to do fine control. Oh, I'm sifting through this guy's stuff that's on his armor, or I've got loads of clutter on my desk in my hab. I can still very fine, you know, have a fine selection of what I want to interact with too. And of course, you know, the, uh, like everything here, this will continue to iterate after 3.23. Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, I don't think, 
I don't think we're telling any tales out of school. 323 is not going to be the final version of any of these features. That, you know, this, this game continues to iterate and continues to evolve. You know, it's we got you got to balance for the Squadron 42 universe. Putting it into the Persistent Universe, there might we might discover a PU location where it does get a little yeah. crazy, yeah. and you know, adjustments have to be made. That's part of development. Yep. Um, so that's what we covered yesterday. So now let now let's now let's go into uh, 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 formally announcing some other things that 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 we're working towards. Um, distribution centers, mm -hmm. distribution centers, which we've shown off. I think we we first introduced the idea of them at CitizenCon uh, two years ago. Uh, we revisited them at the CitizenCon last year. I think we did a Journey to 4.0 special somewhere in the middle. They they blurred together. People, I'm sorry. I've done a lot of these shows. Um, <laughs> Distribution centers are now fully on track for to come in Alpha uh, 323. Yep. Um, what can you tell me about what players can expect? Okay, so just as a bit of background, the distribution centers are these massive facilities that truly are really big, that are down on the surface of planets and, and moons and things like that. And they kind of are what they sound like, right? They're, it's a center of distribution. Like there are lots of landing pads. There should be a big, it should be a big hub of activity basically. And there are a lot of different areas of the distribution center that are different from each other. So you've got the exterior, typically where you'll, people will be landing their ship, unloading cargo, things like that. Um, you've got the offices up top, which is generally more of a front for whatever business or corporation has ownership of this place. And then you've kind of got more of the inner workings, which are kind of where you would typically expect to see cargo being ferried. If there's machinery that are producing stuff down there, if they're making something, then that would be where that's all tucked down. So what we're trying to provide for um, 323 is some variety between the different locations. So slightly different layouts between the different distribution centers. So they all feel a little bit different from each other. Um, have different factions at each of these places as well, which should give a very different feeling of what you're going to be doing there. So just as an example, uh, and we talked about this recently, is um, you might have a law-abiding faction there. And typically, you would be doing what you would expect to at a law-abiding place, where you would be trading, talking to people, things like that, all above board. Uh, if you're a pirate, you can obviously come and attack and cause trouble, but you know they might have security systems mm. made to you know deal with you. You might also have a hostile faction that's take over one of these things that you know a corporation maybe previously had and they they came in and took over and that would be a very combat focused area for you to go and play in and then you might have something that's more of a mix so you go in the front is very professional and business-like but underneath if you go a little bit deeper you might find that they're up to no good Space so wallet. yeah so uh, ultimately for the content we want to provide, the, the distribution centers have a lot of possibility and there's no way that we're going to provide all the content that we want to in one drop. But we definitely want you interacting there, doing cargo missions and potentially some you know, basic like combat missions and things like that to inter interact with all of the different areas of the distribution centers we're going to provide. But the future is very exciting for them. And these are big and diverse. And these are humongous. These are the biggest thing we've yeah. done short of a landing zone. Yeah. Like, like, they, they, they are massive. They are microcosms of the entire Star Citizen FPS experience. When I say FPS, I mean things not in a spaceship. Uh, it, it's, it's, there are, there are missions, you'll get missions that will take you to these places. You'll go to these places to take mission to, to, to get missions to take you out. Some missions, I was, uh, we'll be talking about these on ISC in just like two weeks, so I don't want to spoil everything. But some of the missions, like, are self-contained within the distribution center. They're that big that you can yes. do the entire loop within the distribution center. Yep. Um, hi, Daisy. Uh, it's, it, they, they really are, uh, an exciting new addition and, and, and 323 is not the end of them. Like I said, 323 is not the end of anything like this. They're, they they will continue to evolve uh, beyond that. I, it's one of those things. I don't think I'm ready. We're ready to share that just yet. But uh, there are uh, there are some exciting plans for distribution centers. Uh, Very yeah. Uh, beyond uh, uh, 3, 323, that uh, boy, when they let me tell you, I'm gonna tell you really loud. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Uh, from there, let's move on to some, some ship stuff. Uh, 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 what, what does it say? Um, wow, the Star Citizen Live set has come such a long way, says old boy. Yeah, well, we, we try. We try. Um, master modes. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about master modes again. Master modes almost, uh, actually, we've been talking about master modes for just as long as we've been talking about distribution centers. They first debuted two Citizen Cons ago uh, in 323. 
they are slated to go in. Yep. Uh, they're slated to go in, so yeah, so yay for everybody. Uh, Rich, uh, the, the vehicle experience team, Rich Tyler's team, uh, April and all of them, they're fast working on converting all of Star Citizen's uh, existing uh, spaceships to the master modes, uh, defining the different archetypes, and again, we'll be talking about those in detail uh, in ISC in four weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Uh, what this is not. It's taken us a while to get to master modes. Yep. <laughs> and uh, not everyone is. I think it's safe to say not everybody is completely on board with the idea. You know, I, I, I can read Spectrum, I can read Reddit and whatnot. There, there seem to be just as many people who are for the idea as against. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about this. I mean, it's, it's a big change, right? And people are always, you know, initially going to be um, resistant to it. And I think that's very, very natural because you've been playing a game for such a long time and it's such a big change that you're going to have to relearn a lot of the things that you've already learned before. Um, but ultimately, again, this was a, a, another thing that has come around from us playing the game, especially in like combat focused scenarios in Squadron, and going through and going, you know, like, hey, we feel like change needs to be made. So just a very, very, very high level of, of what master modes are, is uh, essentially you have navigation and two SCM modes that you switch between, and they have very defined purposes with how you fly your ship. And what this has allowed us to do is in um, SEM, which is essentially your combat mode, is we've made it so the combat is able to be a little bit tighter because we've got a bit more control over the ship speeds there. That combat is a lot more personal, a lot tighter, and we felt that it felt for a much more visceral and a lot more personal and experience with whoever you're fighting. And obviously that's translated to player versus player combat as well, which again, we, we've been testing internally quite a lot. And it's avoiding situations where you're able to essentially exploit the flight system to kind of constantly play chase and not really have a proper you know one-on-one -on -one combat with someone and you're constantly running away and not running away so we felt that it was a positive change as we've been playing the game so yeah i think uh, from 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 my limited experience with it uh it gets more exciting the more players that get involved. It's it's yeah. a, it, it's certainly fun one v one, but when but when the when the fur ball starts, when, you know, we're testing some things that uh, where you know more and more players are jumping in and stuff like this. And when when I'm when I'm, when I'm seeing the battles with like fifteen people involved, twenty five people involved, it keeps them all tight, tight. and yeah. compact. Yep. And you and the, literally the screen can be filled with ships. Yeah this way and it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a much more visceral experience. It's a game changer. We've got such beautiful ships, we've got amazing VFX that you know when you're shooting at someone you typically in the past haven't really been able to see because you're you know hundreds of meters if not kilometers away from people. It seems a real shame to not be able to see some of that stuff. You're basically just interacting with the UI. So this bringing you closer together is just a much better feeling experience in, my, in our opinion. So master modes on track 323. At the moment, yeah. Mark it off. And we want a lot of feedback, so. <laughs> and we will get it, I'm sure, but yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. um, along with Master Modes, uh, some other ship-related stuff, uh, precision targeting. Tar targeting to, uh, precision targeting and uh, a big change to, to gimbals and weapon yes. gimbals. What, what, can, what can you tell us about this? So precision targeting, at its very core, is very similar to what you would do in a first-person shooter. You, you take time to aim and it kind of almost helps you be more accurate. So what you can expect in the ships is a immediate zoom. Uh, so I know we've got a system where you can scroll in and zoom. It's maybe a little bit awkward to try and use. This is a more toggle in, toggle out of zoom. So again, you're going to be closer anyway through master modes coming in. This is more a case of you're closer already and now you're zooming in on your target, you can see much more of the ship. So if you're in a combat scenario where you're flying around and having to maneuver a lot and you're dealing with multiple targets, you might not necessarily want to use it too much. But if I'm in a situation where you're flying a Cutlass and I'm trying to take one of your engines off, I can toggle into precision targeting mode and go straight for your engines if I wanted to just take out your engines, get on board and deal with you that way. So it's again, leans more into that closer feeling experience, also helps you with aiming at a, you know, a target rather than trying to pixel hunt a little bit with your screen, uh, and um, obviously makes it more accessible than having to scroll in and out with the mouse wheel. It's just one, one click to toggle in and out. Um, and then with the gimbal change, um, the big change there is all ships are basically now going to have gimbals. Um, the Hold on, just look right at that camera. Don't, 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 don't drop it. Look right at that camera right there. And say that again. All ships are going to have gimbals, or all weapons are going to have gimbals. Weapon slots on ships are going to have gimbals. So 
that's not entirely true. I'm going to contradict myself already. Yeah, there are, there are, there are, there are a, there are a few exceptions. exceptions. You know, you look at the Idris, it's got a massive rail gun on it. It's not yeah. going to be rotating around everywhere. It's the nose gun on all. the Vanguard. Yeah. So there are a few that are going to be stuck as they are. But the uh, what we kind of had thought about for a while that we weren't too keen on is the swap down and swap out for the different weapons uh, and exchanging the gimbal out for that, basically, because new players come in and it's not immediately understandable what's going on there. And we didn't really feel like it was adding as much value. Yeah. Uh, and just to touch on the turrets as well, turrets are now going to have gimbaled weapons too, which is really, really good, because obviously previously you were limited to the rotation speed of the turret. It gives you a little bit more look ahead and a little bit more of a unified, pleasant experience that you can expect from the ships that you can then expect from the turrets as well. So, so we, uh, I think we, we glossed over the, the gimbal change. And again, we have an entire ISC dedicated to this. So we're covering a lot of topics that you're yeah, then going to see sorry. deep dives of for the next seven, eight, nine, ten weeks and whatnot. But with the gimbals, uh, the size restriction is also going away with them. So as in, it's the you're no longer trading. Have to do down. one size, yeah. One, exactly. Exactly one down. Yeah. So so some ships will get bigger weapons for this, and of course there are the exceptions. Uh, basically, I'm not going to give you an exhaustive list of the exceptions, but if you look at a ship and there's clearly a very impossibly fixed weapon on it. Think Inferno, think Vanguard uh, with the nose, think Idris with the railgun, those will not be gimbaled. So we're not, they're not going through and remaking the, the, the ships to, the, to do that. So there are, there are a very small amount of exceptions. Yeah, it, I think it's it, like four or five. Yeah, it will uh, be an exception rather than a yeah, common thing. But basically. you can clearly look at the ship and go, yeah, there, I don't understand how that could be gimbaled. Congratulations, that's probably one of the ones that aren't being gimbaled. <laughs> Um, all right, and again, we will cover all that uh, with Yogi and Rich, Rich, Rich Towler and, and, and their teams uh, in just a few weeks. So stay tuned for more details and examples and, de and all that good stuff. Um, I don't Ready know if I want to go to a big one or a small one. You know, I'm trying, trying to weave the story here because we've got a lot more stuff coming. Um, let's go back to FPS stuff for a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, Dynamic crosshair, scopes, reloading, uh, uh, FPS weapon stuff. Go. What you got? Oh man, how long have we got? <laughs> going back to your old, going back to your old stomping grounds here. Yeah, I mean, like, so please stop me if I go too technical okay. or go too deep on this, because obviously this is kind of my my jam. Um, so God, where do we start? So let's start with reloading. So re the the changes or improvements to reloading, as we've been calling it. Um, have again come through the necessity of change through playing combat in squadron a lot, very focused combat areas where we're able to really hammer out some of the basic combat mechanics where we were in situations that were getting frustrating uh, and we were essentially playing the game as most people probably know, engage in the FPS combat, if you reload, we save your ammo pool to your magazine and that goes back on your suit and you might then end up in a situation where if you want to put more magazines on your suit, your suit is now completely full and you can't put more on unless you swap them out and it's a very sticky, um, tedious. tedious process. Yeah, so it, essentially we're trying to remove steps there rather than get rid of the um, realism that you have with basically having magazines uh, that contain the ammunition, we want to keep that and down the line we may still want to lean into doing the magazine stripping through a, a, a proper animated system. What we really wanted to lean in uh, uh, to at the moment is just an ability to be able to condense the amount of ammunition down that you've got. So that's what we call ammo repooling. And that is an interaction either on the weapon or in your inventory that lets you essentially go, this weapon, I would like to cond condense all of the magazines for that. Your character will play an animation while it's happening. It's quite a basic one. And then it will take a varying amount of time depending on how much ammunition you're shifting. So if I'm doing LMG mags, that will take longer than say if I'm doing pistol magazines that might have, you have 10 bullets in or so. So, uh, and of course, again, we don't want to cover every aspect. We want to save some stuff for, for yes. Torsten's team uh, when he's on in a few weeks. Um, this, is gonna, this, is, this is a weird show. We're, we're, this is not a show that we've done before. We're, we're essentially spoiling the entire season of Inside Star Citizen uh, this quarter, if you, if you haven't figured that out. So this is basically everything that you can expect to see on Thursdays uh, for the next uh, nine, ten weeks as we go. Um, dynamic Crosshair. Okay, Dynamic Crosshair. So... Again, this came through necessity from playing combat so much. It was essentially a situation where you don't always have time to aim. Sometimes you want to just shoot your gun in a desperate situation, and it's really nice to have an indicator there of where it is you're going to shoot. So um, we came up with a dynamic crosshair. It essentially 
gives you an idea of what sort of spread you can expect from your weapon. And, and we essentially simulate spread through a spread cone on our guns just because we don't want the gun shaking all over the place to kind of generate it. So we do add some spread on there. And essentially, the more you fire, obviously it changes, the more unstable it is. The dynamic crosshair basically tells you where you're going to be shooting. Now, what we've done, and this kind of leans into some down the line armor gameplay that we're going to be leaning into where we want to make the armor sets and things feel different and give them a unique purpose is this dynamic crosshair is meant as a combat feature that you get on combat helmets so if i'm you know say an engineer or something like that i don't necessarily need a dynamic crosshair for my gun because i'm not really going out and doing combat you might get other benefits from wearing engineering gear or medical gear or whatever but this is something that we're obviously leaning into long term, and this is one of the first features that we're bringing out for combat suits. And we'll save uh, uh, scopes and, and recoil and stuff for for, for Torsten and their teams like this. I do want to I do want I do want to a, a, a clear something up. I, I can see the chat right now, and even if I couldn't see the chat, I'd know what was happening. He said eight to nine weeks, and somebody's doing math from February second. Is it February second? Yeah. February second to try to figure out when Alpha three twenty three is. Don't. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> I'm just pulling numbers out of my, the, you know, how many episodes that I have planned ahead and stuff like that. That's not any indication of when the patch is gonna come out. Don't do that. And just enjoy life. Be in the moment. Enjoy all of this that we're talking about that we're shooting for for Alpha 323 and don't spoil the experience for yourself by putting dates on things and trying to reverse inf information that doesn't exist. I don't know what voice that was. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible I've been doing this too long, JJ. Maybe. And it's only the start of it, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, you mentioned the, the, the combat helmets and the, you know, so, so, so sorry, let's talk about the visor and lens stuff. In, in, in ISC yesterday, uh, players saw a little bit of the, the 3D mini map and the corner yep. and some visor stuff. Uh, 323? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think the, uh, so basically visor and hood is going to be a big restyle. So, uh, I think the, 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 the big task at the moment is restyling it for um, the Persistent Universe. Um, yeah, just a few features essentially. We, we have like the existing hint system that we've got in game. That's all yeah. being tidied away into the new notification system that we've got with high and low priority notifications where we've got some really nice visuals for those. Um, we've obviously got the newly reworked um, I'm going to call it like the combat stack. That's what I quite like calling it. Yeah. No one else calls it that, but basically it shows you where all your ammo is, gives you all your feedback for your weapons, changing items, things like that. It shows you what's in your hands. Um, Speaking of thing, let's, 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 let's all agree to call it the combat stack for JJ, who's, who's doing such a good job here today. Um, then on the left-hand side, we've obviously got all the widgets for things like you know your health, the environment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, we've got the compass that's going in too, which is, yeah. We've got the compass, it's in the video. You can already see it. Wait, an actual compass? Well, this- Like I can, I can tell what direction I'm going? Yes. Like no, no more which no, direction no. am I going? I can, no. I, can, I can go, that's north? Yeah, well not north in space, but you know, you've got a bearing. Maybe I'll, not, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. North on a planet. I'll take it. Yeah, you happy? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then obviously one of the biggest ones is the, the mini map. Uh, and the minimap is uh, amazing, uh, it really is, <laughs> and, it, and it, it links into what we're doing, which we can talk about in a little bit, with the star map on the Mobiglass 2, which is basically the area map. We, I'll make very clear now, we're not doing all locations. Yes, uh, I, I was just about the, to hit that. With the minimap, because yeah. obviously there is a lot of yeah. space and areas to mark up. Yes, yeah, I was going to say, let's talk about that. The minimap is, does not just exist in a vacuum. Yeah. Every single location in the Persistent Universe has to be marked up in order to feed that information in the yep. mini map. Uh, I, I, I'll go ahead and say, because I talked to John Crew about this just yesterday, the ship team is working diligently to get as many of the ships as possible yep. marked up yep. for 320. Same with so landing zones. You can at least explore yeah. your ships uh, with the mini maps and stuff, and then maybe a couple uh, uh, locations here and there. Yep. And then that will just continue. Patch after patch after patch will just continue to mark up more and more locations yep. until eventually going. all of the PU reaches parity. Yep, so it's going to be really easy to find your way around like everywhere once it's done. So you can basically just get a view of where you are, where you want to go, set a route, 
you know, all okay. that good stuff. Okay. Um, should we should we lay it on him? I mean, we're right there. We're right there with the mini map. I don't even know where you're going to go with this. You don't know where we're going to go for the oh, mini yeah, map. Oh yeah, no. Okay, now you said Sh that. Should yeah. we lay, should we lay it up? Sure. Say it. Star map. Star map. New star map. Yeah. So big, big quality of life improvement from where we're at right now. And again, you know, we're changing it because it's the, the current star map is difficult to use. It's not clear, you know, we, we, you don't get enough feedback. Like some things are broken, you know. Uh, <laughs> he said some things are broken. Yeah. Go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, but yeah, we, we've spent a lot of time on styling it, making it very clear, making it very easy to use, done a lot of testing ourselves of just playing around with it. We've added some new features to it too. So essentially a estimated travel time if you set a route somewhere, um, search functionality, which is all fairly basic to start with. We'll obviously come back more on that later, but uh, or down the line. But essentially, you know, if I want to go to Hurston, I type in Hurston. It takes me to Hurston on the map, and I click set route, and there I go. Like it's uh, this is you, you know. I don't understand. Why can, why can it be so easy? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's been a it's been a long time coming, and we're obviously very very excited about it. I have so many traumas though, JJ. What am I going to do with all my traumas? You have to find new ones. That's, that's what you have to do, create, create more. That's true. Yeah. Um, and then uh, from, from, the, from the star map, let's just go way to the other end of, of, of technical stuff uh, uh, with a little thing uh, we sh uh, we, uh, showcased by Sean Tracy and, and Andre uh, at CitizenCon, the character creator, character ah. customizer. Yeah, the character customizer is super cool. Um, so along with all the new scans of characters and, and, and all the new basically look people that you're going to be able to, to customize from, um, yeah, you've got basically two ways of customizing a character now, which is very exciting. Um, you've essentially got something that allows you to do a DNA blend, uh, which is well, what, that's what we call it anyway. So you're basically taking your head on one side, which is what you currently have. There's basically a bank of heads on the other side that you can flick through and look, you know, I want, I like these particular features. And what you can do is you can select one, go, I like this person's nose. I can then go on my slider not to 100% and go, you know, I want to go all the way to having their nose and I want to go all the way to having mine or I want to go somewhere in between. So it blends the two shapes together. And you can do that for the entire head. You can do it for ears, nose, eyes, brow, lips, all that sort of stuff. The second way of doing it, which is a very cool one, is, um, I don't know what we ended up calling it, but essentially you are grabbing anchor points on the face. So let's say I grabbed my brow and I was looking at it from the side and I dragged my mouse to the right hand side and tried to pull it out. What it does is it looks through our bank of heads that we've got in the back end and essentially tries to translate what is there to what you're doing with the mouse. So if I did it on my nose and pulled it that way, it would try and find a nose with a shape that's like that. So you're basically grabbing points on the face, moving the mouse around, and essentially seeing it go through all of these different iterations. To you. So it feels like you're sculpting, but you're not, if that makes sense. So it, you come out the other side being able to make some really, really unique characters, and we've had a lot of fun in, in tests trying to make you know, Stone Cold Steve Austin, <laughs> you know, Dave Batista. You always try. <laughs> It was a, a, a fun testing session. You know, you can get something that looks, you know, pretty damn close. But on top of that, we've got new hair, facial hair, makeup. Uh, the hair is very, very cool, by the way. You've now got hair dye. So if I really wanted to, let's say, change my hair to white, I can change it to white, have it fade into blue. I can select how quickly it fades in, if it's like a sharp transition, if it's near the root or near the tip. There's a ton of really cool customization there. And obviously, the UI has had a big overhaul as part of that, too. Yeah. Um, uh, not an alien says, I hope we can make freaks. Depends. Yeah. Just, no, just leave yeah, it. Yeah, OK. Just, just, just let him sit with that. <laughs> let everybody sit knowing that that's, what, that that's what he said. You can make not an alien. unique characters. Um, cargo. Cargo's getting its next big kind of kind of kind of kind of kind of push there. Uh, what's what, what can you tell us that's involved there? Freight elevators, obviously. Yeah, we've got the freight elevators. We've got the um, basically the the instance hangers. So you're going to be able to go to your own hangar. You're going to have your freight elevator. You're going to be able to spawn your ship. Um, the core part of the experience is that you essentially go to your freight elevator. We'll have a kiosk with a nice new UI on it. 
Um, you can then interact with that to essentially go, what's in my storage? So the, the regular inventory area storage is going away, so it's much more physically based in your hangar storage. It's very much more personal. Uh, you then go, I want all this stuff, click, 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 click. You fill up or see the freight elevator filling up on the UI. You then click a button and lo and behold, all your stuff's just come out the ground. And then it's up to you to load it into your ship. Um, so as part of that, we'll also have things like hover trolleys. We've obviously got the tractor beam that's usable in there too. So you can then wheel it over, start loading up your ship. And it's a much more representative um, feel of what the cargo experience is going to be like long term. It's a lot in 323. Oh, yeah. We're not oh, yeah. done. We're not done. Uh, there's a, there's a, I want to start wrapping this because I want to get to our next talking point here. Uh, we're, we're not sharing everything that's in 323. There are still some things we want to keep secret. Uh, there's still some, obviously, I also don't want to spoil an entire season of ISC. We've already you, Sorry. You know, covered so much and stuff like this. <laughs> but you can also expect things like uh, the Blockade Runner mission. Uh, if you remember, we covered that on ISC sometime last year, uh, maybe in quarter three sometime. Uh, the blockade runner experience that we talked about then, uh, that's targeted for 323. Uh, a big update to Xeno Threat that mm -hmm. we're not going to share just yet. Oh, uh, we're going to let players, uh, that's one of those things that we're going to let players uh, experience uh, for yourself. Uh, Xeno Threat and uh, uh, a sort of uh, a pre Xeno Threat thing that's mm -hmm. got a name, but I'm not going to share the name today. I want to see if people can suss it out. Uh, but, but Xeno Threat's getting much, much bigger, much broader and much more interesting, personally, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll roll out. That'll start to roll out before 323 and then into 323, mm -hmm. uh, if all things go as planned. Um, the looting stuff, the, 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 the looting stuff. Oh, the looting, uh, the looting's fantastic. Uh, the the, the yeah. new looting stuff that yeah. we saw at CitizenCon mm -hmm. going in. Uh, the, the new, uh, there's a new shopping app. Uh, we haven't showed that because the uh, uh, the guys on uh, Team Kian's team actually are working on it right now. Uh, we'll be showing that in ISC hopefully in about five, six weeks. When we go back to Team Kian for even more stuff that they're working on, uh, they got a whole lot of stuff in 323 uh, on that team. Um, and then, um, some economy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing this a long time, and we haven't had there, 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 we haven't talked a whole lot about economy stuff, uh, and it's rolling in mimosas like that. So for the economy stuff, uh, we're actually going to take a quick break, and we're going to bring in two members of our economy team who have never been on video before. We've never we've never actually uh, put a showcase on on the people who were down in the trenches doing the economy stuff. So we're going to do that in a minute. So we're going to throw it to a beautiful scene of, of Pyro Two. Four, I don't remember which one, uh, while we shuffle some chairs around. And we'll be back to talk even more stuff coming in Alpha 323. So stay tuned. And we're back. Hi, everybody. Uh, we're talking about all the cool... Awesome stuff. I was going to say, say a swear word, and I already used my one yesterday. Um, uh, come, uh, being targeted for Alpha 323. Joining us uh, now are members of our UK uh, uh, economy team, uh, Andre and Nick. Andre, Nick, how are you doing? Hello. Hello. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So this is your first time on any kind of video stuff. Uh, economy is not, a, it's not a topic we often uh, talk about on our video stuff. It's not a particularly visual uh, a topic. So, but there are some, there's some big changes coming in 323 and then we'll continue on to 4.0 stuff. So we wanted to start this conversation that will continue in the weeks uh, leading in. Before we get into that, let's introduce yourselves. Let people know who you are and what you do. So Andre, you're closest. So we'll start with you. Hey. Who are you? What do you do? I am Andre. I'm the lead economy designer. The lead economy designer. What does the lead economy designer do? Not much. <laughs> <laughs> but well, uh, <laughs> always figured the show out. But I disagree with the fact that economy is not cool. I brought all my spreadsheets, so I'm going to prove you wrong. You just gonna you just live your life in spreadsheets. Of course. Yes. Okay. Uh, Nick. Yeah. Hi. I'm Nick, uh, and I am uh, one of the economy designers. You look at your, you looked at your notes for that. Didn't you? I saw you. I just, All you had to do was say your name and what you be, did. Just you to be sure. Just got to be certain. 
Okay. I have actually got, I've got based in Manchester studio here, but I figured that was <laughs> unnecessary. So, <laughs> and of course, the uh, the economy team is not just you. You're just the you're just the two who were drafted to appear uh, uh, with us today. Uh, who else is on your team? There's actually three of us. We have uh, Connor in the U.S. Hello, Connor. He's probably hey, Connor. Uh, most certainly watching us right yeah. now live. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you say one thing to Connor before we continue. What would it be? Uh, what would it be? Check your notes. Oh yeah, we should check the notes. Uh, it would be well done on uh, other systems. Oh, ominous. I like it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about economy because I think, I mean, everybody knows what the textbook definition, well, I shouldn't say everybody. M most people know what the textbook definition of the word is. Uh, as it applies to video games, I think it's easy to just assume it's the prices of things and that's it. But we know that it's more than that. So, so what is economy as it applies to a large-scale open universe MMO like Star Citizen? Uh, I completely agree uh, with your statement. First of all, of course, it, it includes uh, the, the prices, but uh, at least for myself, it's a bit more than that. It includes uh, uh, telling, uh, telling a story, but uh, instead of using uh, uh, nice pictures, in, instead of using uh, words, we are telling a story with, uh, with numbers. We want to, to make sure that everybody is immersed in the, in the world, they are having fun, they, they progress, everything that they are doing uh, not only makes uh, a difference for the world and for, for the other players, also makes a difference for themselves. Yeah. Would you agree with that, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely, I mean, especially with an MMO, it's, um, it's all about um, an immersive dynamic. It's, 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 the, it's the feel that everything around you is connected and that your actions have purpose and you can progress and so can your friends. It's interesting to me that you use the word Im uh, immersive because it is one of the you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going on 10 years here, so uh, one of the things that I, I've heard uh, CR uh, 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 mention, complain about periodically is, is the fact that you can buy a missile for like 500 AUEC. That's not the actual number, but it's some ridiculously no number. It's like, you can never just go into a store and buy a missile for 500 bucks or whatever. It's like, we got to get this economy stuff uh, uh, done. Um, is that what we're talking about here with 323 and, and, and 4.01? Are, are we starting the process of now going through and retuning all of these? For uh, sure, we are in the process, the process of retuning that. Uh, we are not only giving our, uh, our players and to ourselves, because all of us are, are, are fans of the game, uh, but the chance to earn more money, to, to become rich, and be, uh, be rewarded in a, in a fair way for the activity they, uh, they do, but also the chance to spend uh, that, that you see on something that they can be proud of. Mm -hmm. And uh, so before we get into some, some, some the specifics of what we're, uh, what's going to happen in 323, uh, when we talk about the things that are economy, obviously the prices, the prices of a thing are the economy. But the, the travel times, how long it takes you to take something from this to this is, in a, in a, is a factor of the economy because that now determines whether the payout is, you know, whether a, whether a, a 10,000 credit payout is actually worth the 10,000 or not. Um, how long it takes you to get your ship back from, from insurance is, is a factor of economy. Uh, what else am I not thinking of? Those are very, uh, very good uh, examples. And uh, going back to, uh, to immersion, uh, it's almost like uh, level design. Uh, I want, uh, we want to uh, uh, find in the places that we, we go and explore the things that we would expect to, to, find, uh, to find there. And their prices to be uh, according to, for example, to the distance from where they are, uh, they are produced. Uh, uh, the players to have access to the resources that they, that they, uh, they need and they want. Mm -hmm. uh, and Fuller0079 says, he says UEC, not AUEC. Don't read into it, man. I promise. Just... <laughs> It, it, like we're sitting here, we're giving you all this actual information, and then people are like digging for like hidden information between the words. It just, it just makes, makes it's just going to make you unhappy. It doesn't mean nothing. Enjoy the show. All right. So in three twenty three, the first, uh, let's, not, let's say the next, the next kind of major push towards you know building this economy, towards hardening this economy that's been if you don't mind my saying, kind of all over the place for, for years and years and years, okay. uh, it's going to happen. What are we talking about as far as what's going to happen in 323? Well, cohesive is a word that we are uh, using uh, a lot, uh, bringing all these, uh, these systems that our wonderful colleagues uh, already built, bringing them together so they make sense when they, when they work together. 
Uh, so uh, you've already seen some glimpses uh, uh, in Pyro, uh, in the design of Pyro, in the design of the prices of the new, uh, yeah. of, of the, the new prices of armors that yeah. need to wear, work very hard uh, on them. Uh, we're working on the weapons, uh, on FPS weapons, uh, pre-balance, uh, vehicles, ships. Uh, eventually, we're going to do a pass on uh, everything, basically. Mm -hmm. So armors, weapons, uh, probably the one that most people will notice right off the bat is ships and vehicles. So there's going to be a substantial change to the prices of ships and vehicles in 323. Um, we're not going to ask you for specific numbers here because 323 is still many, many weeks away and it would, it would be a pointless exercise right now. But talk to me about the process. How, how are you determining what these new prices are, supposed, are going to be? Uh, there's not a, a good way or a bad way to to do uh, to do it. We we explore different uh, different ways. Uh, so uh, uh, talking specifically about uh, uh, vehicles, uh, for example, manufacturers. It's something that we uh, look into. We could take uh, each individual vehicle or ship and disassemble it into its stats. Uh, how fast does it uh, accelerate? How fast? Uh, what is its maximum speed and mass on, uh, and everything? But because that is subject to change, we don't want to to tweak those prices uh, every time uh, a small change is, is made. Right. So for that reason, we, we take those factors that uh, uh, we know they, they are already decided on. For example, I mentioned already manufacturers. Some manufacturers put more uh, uh, care into their uh, uh, work. They use better materials. They use uh, better technology. Uh, they use alien technology that is har harder to, to get. That informs the, the price. Obviously, if a ship is uh, uh, larger, it's going to, <laughs> to cost more. <laughs> Gotcha. And if it's strict, it's obviously going to be cheaper. <laughs> I would not confirm or deny that. Yeah. Uh, so, 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 ma so manufacturer is, is one yes. tenant. Uh, what else is a factor? Uh, the size of the, the ship uh, and uh, uh, its focus. Uh, so the same way uh, uh, a tank is more expensive than a lorry, uh, the same way we would expect a, a combat ship to have uh, better technology, better armor, better stats on average uh, than a truck. Okay. So... If it's, it sounds like, if I'm understanding you right, uh, correctly, in 323, there's going to be a, a, a massive change to the in-game cost. And I want to make sure that we're, we're talking. This is, not, this is a development thing. It's not a, it's not a marketing thing before the friggin' Reddit threads start up. This is, go, this is going through and working the in-game economy uh, and realigning the ships based on manufacturer, uh, a size. role, size. Android. Role, size. Um, I did ask you if you could give us some examples. Now, these are not going to be final examples. Uh, obviously, again, the, the changes won't happen for, for several, several, several weeks yet. But just to help us illustrate, to help us prepare mm -hmm. uh, for what kind of stuff in time. Did, were you able to get some examples? Yes. For uh, okay. I, I watch your show, so I see that you have a Pisces uh, there. No, yeah. So uh, the rescue one, uh, because we want to make it uh, more affordable, and uh, because myself, I see my, uh, I see myself playing uh, as a as a medic in the future. I made it a bit uh, a bit more uh, affordable, uh, so it's going to be in the in the range of half a million uh, USC, alpha USC. <laughs> and um, they, they, they like so, you're, so you're saying something like the Pisces might actually go down yes. as far as the cost. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the Pisces rescue is going to be a lot more uh, affordable, affordable than it, uh, it was. Uh, I can give you the example of my, my favorite uh, ship. You can argue about that in the, in the chat. Uh, it's the Arrow. I really like, I like the Arrow. Uh, it's going to be in, um, um, in the range of about 2 million uh, per USC. Uh, it's a combat ship. It's high performance ship. So obviously uh, somebody that can drive that ship uh, works very hard to, to get that ship. And they can, again, they can be proud of owning that, uh, that ship. Um, so some, those uh, seem like kind of in, you know, lower level, entry level ships. Yes, yes. Uh, can we talk about something kind of mid-range, like a Connie? Or uh, a, a Connie, it's a very good example because a lot of, uh, a lot of our players uh, like that, that ship. I think it's in the range of 10, 10 million uh, now. Um, maybe going back into combat, something even larger. Uh, I really like, like the hammerhead. hammerhead. Yeah. Yeah, the hammerhead uh, is going to be about uh, forty-five to fifty million USC. Uh, it's it's a it's a ship that uh, uh, it's it's a multi-crew ship, so I, I can see players pulling their resources together to buy such a such a ship. Gotcha. And and this is 
you know, you're using the words it's going to be and stuff like this. This is what we're working towards. This is what, this is what, we're, yes, yes, uh, what yes. we're currently working towards, of course, with feedback and testing and stuff. The numbers may, may change and whatnot. Of course, uh, 323 is not the end all be all for anything. It's like, obviously, these things go in. We get player feedback. We do the, the testing at full oh, yes. scale. And it's then it's adjust, only the first. And then adjust and continue. It's only the first pass to the, the economy team is but, but this is this is all this this is a conver this is a conversation that's uh, that that that's that's been waiting to happen for years and years. Like like we've all like we've always. Uh, I don't think it's been a secret to anybody who's played Star Citizen that, they, like I said, the economy has always just been kind of this. We'll get to it. We'll mm. get to it. We'll get to it. Mm. We're, we're here. We're we're getting to it now, for lack of a better term. So the Alpha Three Twenty Three is that is that next push, but it's not the last push. It'll continue to be balanced, continue to evolve. Um, I'm going to ask you for like a, a, a okay. So we, we we did we did a we, we did a Pisces and a, and, a, and, a, and an arrow. We did a, a, a constellation. Let's go to the far end and just see if we can uh, get some of that sticker shock out of the way. What are you thinking for something like an 890, for example? For for example. You like the nicer things in life. Oh, well, or, or, I'm, 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 just, I'm just trying to work the sticker shock here. So Origin, fancy manufacturer, 890, super big on the size. Um, what are you thinking? I'm just going to hold my hold so my let's, alpaca uh, here. For let's uh, let's make a list. Do you want gold on the walls? Do you like <laughs> do you like the marbles in the bathrooms? <laughs> give, give, what do you give, need? Me, give me the worst case scenario. What, what are we thinking? Worst case scenario. Um, no, we are talking about uh, luxury. Uh, we are talking about uh, um, um, origin, uh, or manufacturer that uh, it's uh, uh, famous for putting so much care and so much quality in their uh, in their ships and. Uh, I'm thinking uh, in the range of 70 million uh, USC. Okay. Somebody that has a, 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 a they have jump, mom. they can be proud of it. It's all right. Are we so going to be able to sell virtual kidneys? <coughs> Is that a thing? Look, look at him. He's the FPS guy. Not yet. Is that coming in 323? No. Oh. <laughs> we can balance the price on that. But I've known JJ a long time. He's not going to dismiss the idea out of hand. <laughs> Maybe harvesting some organs. Yeah. Maybe we've got a you know, sideline in nine. Got a multi tool. <laughs> <laughs> That's sorry. what the multi tool is for. <laughs> All right. So so yeah. So obviously uh, you know these are the these are the prices that we're that we're currently thinking. This is the, this, this is the work. This work is ongoing and will continue until Alpha three twenty three releases. Uh, once it releases as part of Alpha three twenty three, it will continue to be evaluated. Yep. It'll continue to, to to solicit feedback. Continue to look at analytics. All that good stuff and make adjustments as necessary because yep. that's what you do with a live service game. You make adjustments as necessary. Um, thank you so much for this. This was this was uh, again like I remember you know coming to you. I was like, hey, you know, we want to talk about a, a economy. You were very eager. You were very you, you you since the first time I ever met you. You're like, I want to get on there and start chatting with people of econ about economy. So I'm glad we we got a chance. To I want that feedback as soon as possible. That's the reason. That's what we like to hear, Andre. Um, Guys, thank you so much uh, for being on the show. Is there anything, uh, JJ? Anything more we want to say about three twenty three? Let's go back through. The, let's go back through the list real quick before we uh, we're talking. So right now, targeted for new uh, for Alpha three twenty three, we're targeting new EVA, uh, the new uh, pie piss pit, whatever the we gotta gotta get better at naming. You know, things. it's even better. There's two pies, Jared. We're only dealing with one. Uh, new default item actions, uh, uh, reloading, uh, dynamic crosshair, scopes, distribution centers, master modes, precision targeting, turret and gimbal changes, uh, visor and lens stuff, uh, new looting screens, uh, a new looting system rather, a uh, new shopping app, uh, the star map, character customizer, a whole bunch of things cargo including the, 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 the freight elevators and, and some more, um, the blockade runner mission stuff we talked about, uh, big changes to Xenothreat uh, and uh, these economy changes, and that's just the stuff I'm willing uh, to share with you right now. Uh, there's even more. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Feel well, good? It's a lot to do. A lot to do. There is a lot to do. But we're in the but, Yeah, we're all excited. So. We're all excited. It's building on the work that you guys have been doing for Squadron 42 for the last two years. Uh, it, it's, uh, the teams are working hard to, to, to convert it over. We've already got interviews in the can for ISC for, for, for distribution centers and master modes and stuff like that. We're going to be talking to you about all that stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, so lots of great stuff uh, coming, I hope. 
I hope you're as excited. Let me change the way I want to say it. I've been doing, like I said, I've been doing this for, I'm going on 10 years now. You've seen me here, you've seen me in LA, you've seen me in a variety of situations talking to you about this, that, or the other thing. Uh, you've seen me cautious, you've seen me with trepidation, you've seen me you, 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 uh, uh, hedge my bets left and right. Um, the last time I went full-throated into something, I ended up with a beard that was like this, and it wasn't good. Uh, I hope you can, can, can take from my own personal enthusiasm uh, I see the work that these guys are doing each and every day. I've been seeing the work they've been doing for the last two years and just waiting, waiting, waiting for the time where this gets brought back over to the PU. Uh, we're here. This is going to be one heck of a year when the squadron team comes back with the Star Citizen team and uh, it's nothing but blue skies. I, I, I'm not going to say that. No, I'm not going to say it's nothing but blue skies. But I, I, I'm getting caught up in my own hype. Let's make some magic happen. It's going to be a magical year. Let's just say that. I'm not going to say nothing loose with these. I was going to get hit by a meteor when I walk out the door <laughs> of that. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, before this week's show, uh, I did want to take a few minutes to talk, if I can, as myself, uh, not as a CIG representative, but just as Jared Huckabee, uh, the dude that works in the game industry. Uh, 2023 was a huge year for the release of video games. And if you followed any ounce of gaming news, you've probably know that it was one of the hardest years for those who create the video games. Uh, that struggle to stay employed uh, has extended into the first month of 2024, as I think the last count was nearly 5,000 people have been laid off in the video game industry in the first 30 days alone. Um, I spend my time dedicated to highlighting the people who make video games possible. And as one of those people who were lucky enough to do, get to do, still get to do what I love, I wanted to take a moment at the end of the show, just as me, to show my appreciation, and my gratitude to all those people who are dedicated to creating the universes for our entertainment, both here at CIG and at every game studio that's ever made a game I've played, uh, to those who've made the games that I still haven't played, the backlog is real, and, my, and just my, Overall gratitude for everybody who contributes to this, uh, to this industry. Uh, you're appreciated, and uh, we're, all still, we're all thinking about you always. So uh, hope you guys land on your feet. Uh, we're going to keep on trucking. We're going to keep on making uh, the biggest and baddest uh, MMO, space MMO we can. And uh, yeah, thanks for humoring me for the last few minutes. Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk. It's just me, but I thought I'd take the chance. I, I needed to say something. So thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed Star Citizen Live. Hope you're as hyped about Alpha 323 as I am. Uh, join us next week on Inside Star Citizen uh, when we shake things up and we uh, explore the work of a team uh, you'd probably never expect us to. Uh, it's not a 323 thing. It's, a, it's, it's one of those little cool detours that we take sometimes. Uh, but I, but I, their, real, their work is really cool and I hope you'll appreciate it as much as I do. And then we'll be back right here for another Star Citizen Live next week. Uh, and I have no idea who's on that show yet. <laughs> I just gotta, I gotta wander through the hallways like the Grim Video Reaper. Like, you're next on my show. So, take care. Thanks a lot. That's Andre. That's Nick. That's JJ. I'm Jared. See you later. Take care. Bye. Thank you, Jared.